Antequera, in the south of the Iberian Peninsula, is the site of one of Europe's most important megalithic complexes. The largest of the three megalithic constructions in the complex was built some 5,000 years ago. It is known as the Menga Dolmen. At that time, the scenery was very different to today. The hand of man had barely affected the environment. Dense pine woods covered the mountainsides and scattered oak groves stretched down to the banks of the rivers that cut through the plains. The landscape was dotted with ponds and lakes, bordered by alder, mountain ash and hazelnut trees. The builders of Menga were the first peoples to farm this fertile land. Many small settlements have been discovered in the area. The inhabitants of these settlements were farmers and herders. They also hunted, fished and gathered fruit and made things such as flint tools. These peoples began to travel to an open-air village at the site, known as the Cerro Marimacho. The communities shared religious codes, as well as a notion of belonging to a tribe or clan. The dolmen was clearly built along an alignment pointing towards the monumental Peña, a remarkable mountain whose form evokes a sleeping giant. Using stone hoes with wooden handles and deer shoulder blades for shovels, they cleared the brush and began to prepare the terrain. After removing the soil and exposing the underlying rock, they began to level and prepare the surface in order to lay out the perimeter of the trench in which to lay the foundations for the slabs that would become the structure's walls. We stand before a landscape whose most powerful feature is the fragmented profile of La Peña an icon creating a permanent dialogue between the universe and humankind. Using pigments to mark the lines and string and wooden poles to take measurements, they laid out the perimeter of the building. The entire community helped dig the ditch using deer horns and pointed stakes. Once finished, ramps of soil and stones were made so that the stone slabs that would become the walls could be slid into position in the foundations.
wooden or stone wedges were forced into the natural fissures of the rock and boiling water was poured in to cause a split. The stone slabs were fixed to a wooden structure and slid over rollers that moved on rails. All the men and women of the community helped move the stones. Slowly, the slab was moved closer. When it reached the edge of the trench, a weight was placed on the end so that it tipped over and slid into place in the foundations. With the help of levers, the slab was placed upright. Then, it was bolstered at the base with boulders and the gaps were filled with earth and stones. Once the slab was near the trench, the rock was honed to make it fit with those already in place. One by one, the additional slabs of the chamber walls were put into place following a pre-established order so that each slab supported the next. When the walls were finished, the central pillars were put into place. What we see before us is much more than a geographical reality. It is a state of mind, a center of the world, where the sacred is manifested in all its glory. A complex series of questions and answers arises around the Peña, as if it were an existential discourse or a meditation on life and death. One by one, following an established order, the slabs were put into place until the roof was completed. Once the process was finished, the material filling the inside of the chamber was removed and the roof slabs gradually descended until they were resting on the walls. Finally, 
successive layers of earth and stones were used to cover the monument, forming the tumulus that gave its final appearance. For these agricultural and herding communities, megalithic monumental architecture may have been a way of ideologically establishing the presence and roots of the society on the land. As funerary chambers, some megalithic structures were true repositories of genealogical and cultural identity, as well as places to conduct the ceremonies related to the symbolic world of the societies that built them. In its formidable stone setting, La Peña stands out like a gigantic question mark. The presence of Menga evoked a transcendence of atmospheres and settings when in the uncertainty of early times, it became an existential milestone. It is a territory without name, whose imprint contextualizes our own survival. A mythical place where the strewn fragments of our ancestors are gathered.